Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander and I am back with Mina from J Mac Lundy and we're gonna be going over a lot of information today between FHA and conventional loans as well as down payment. I wanna welcome Mina, thanks again for joining us back here. No, and thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, and we just wanna get right into it today. So the first thing I really have a question for is what is the biggest difference? Because there's a lot of people out there, especially first time home buyers, they're trying to figure out um, the lowest down payment they can make to be able to get into home. And there's two main ones that are out there right now. And that's the FHA, which is usually about 3.5% down. Um, and then conventional, which can go as low as 3%. So I just wanted to talk to you about it since you're the one running the numbers every day for clients. Um, what is the biggest difference that you see between FHA and a conventional, let's say 3% down uh, when you're looking at trying to qualify someone for a mortgage? Yeah. So first off, um, what I do notice is number one, a lot of people think the only low down payment option is the FHA loan when in actuality, the conventional loan has a lower down payment option, but the conventional loan will only allow you to go to 3% down payment only if you're under a $510,000 loan limit for Orange and LA County. And so anything above that loan amount, then your down payment requirement is going to shift up to 5%, where FHA loans, it remains at the 3.5%, all the way up to 765000 loan amount. But with that being said, um, with the quick analysis I'm showing here, I just wanted to discuss the main differences between the FHA and conventional loans. And so first off, um, with the FHA loan, I guess one of the implications of it is that they are going to require mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. And so with conventional loans, they are going to be a lot more, I guess, more specific when it comes to what your mortgage insurance payment will be based upon your credit score, your debt to income ratio, and your qualifications in general. Where FHA loans, they're pretty much same percentage across the board, whether you're 680 FICO score, 740 FICO score, the difference is not going to be very much. So it's actually very beneficial for maybe somebody with a little bit of credit blemishes. The terms may be much cheaper and the monthly payment might be lower by going FHA just because they're going to be a lot more forgiving for that. But conventional loans, they're going to be a lot more rewarding toward the higher credit score borrowers, but then they're going to penalize more on the lower credit score borrowers. And so to answer your question, which option I would recommend would really depend on who I'm speaking with. Just because depending on the family, if they do have a great credit score and they want to put a low down payment, typically the conventional loan would make more sense because of a few other implications that I'll be going over. But if you do have a little bit more of a lower credit score, or maybe there's a specific qualifying guideline that doesn't fit with conventional but fits with FHA, then you know we'll go with the FHA loan. But the ultimate goal is going to be eventually to refinance out of the FHA loan so you can get into conventional. And your mortgage insurance isn't required for the life of the loan with conventional. It eventually drops off once you reach 80% of your loan amount, or I'm sorry, of the purchase price when you bought the home. Got it. And for those people that are just starting to get in the process of buying their first home and they're hearing these things like mortgage insurance, can you kind of go over just really briefly what that is and why it's kind of important to know about as you're starting to apply for a loan? Yeah. And so that's another thing too, that online calculators tend to overestimate mortgage insurance a lot. But for this, you can see the differences between, you know, this is actually going to be for like a higher FICO 740 credit score client. Okay. If they go with FHA, their monthly mortgage insurance payment is about $339 a month. And then with conventional, it's a little lower at $230 a month. And uh, so with mortgage insurance, it's required for anyone putting under a 20% down payment for Fannie, Freddie, which are the agencies that govern conventional financing and also the FHA government loans too. But I will say, Depending on your situation, if you have a great FICO score and you're a well-qualified borrower, the mortgage insurance is actually not as much as a lot of people think. Like in this case, this is a 3% down scenario, but for conventional loans, for example, if you put 10% down, 15% down, 5% down, the percentage in which you have to pay the mortgage insurance, it's going to go lower and lower. And another, I guess, point I would like to make, too, is for FHA, it's very standard. There's a percentage that's going to be tied to the mortgage insurance, and that's the mortgage insurance you pay. But for conventional, there's a few different types of ways you can pay back mortgage insurance. And one's going to be the monthly option. And again, that drops off once you pay the loan balance down to 80% of the price you bought the home at. Okay. And second, it's going to be something called a mortgage insurance buyout 
where you could actually pay one lump sum single premium at closing and not have mortgage insurance at all. And then third okay. is going to be something called lender paid mortgage insurance. And I will give everybody a heads up to watch out for a lot of the advertisements that say no mortgage insurance lower than 20% down conventional because we're all going to Fannie and Freddie. We are all using their guidelines. And so that means that the mortgage insurance is there. It's just priced into the rate. And so whether or not that option is going to be worth it for you is really going to depend on how long you plan to keep the home. Because in the long run, if we even compare it to the buyout option, the monthly option, mm -hmm. and we compare it to a higher interest rate, but no mortgage insurance, in the very long run, that's going to be the highest cost option for you. And so if you're going to keep the home for the long haul, then the other two options may make more sense. And so I hope that, yeah, whatever professional you're talking to is a lot more upfront regarding that just to see and make sure that you're in the best position possible to save as much money in the long run. Got it. Okay. And so, I mean, it looks like in terms of um, down payment wise, I mean, there's not really, I mean, you can actually even go lower down payment and in the conventional versus you can the FHA. Um, and then especially in Orange County, I mean, it's, it's really going to be hard to find a place that's going to be under five hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> even in, in Riverside County now, it's harder to find a place like that. So it's something that you might kind of have to be steered depending on the price point you're looking at, like you were saying. Exactly, uh, and then, I mean, although I'm saying this about the FHA loan program, I mean, at the end of the day, if your family, we have to kind of look at the cost of waiting too, because if your family is mm -hmm. already paying to twenty five hundred, three thousand, two thousand a month in renting, I actually wouldn't say it is wise to wait much longer in order to save up for a higher down payment and go conventional. Like the FHA is there because of their more lenient qualifying standards and to get your foot in the door. And you could always yeah. refinance later down the line into the conventional, but at the very least, you're already starting to build some equity. You're gaining tax benefits. You're putting money toward the principal balance, which is coming directly back to you. And so it's like an automated savings account. And so I think if you take all those into consideration, of course, just see the differences and see how you feel about them, of course, because it's situational. But for a family like that who's renting for around that much, I think it's always going to be worth going with a, some kind of loan program option and getting into that home. Because once you find a home you love and you miss it, you know, that home's gone. And so I think yeah. that's important to keep in mind. Yeah. And especially right now. So, I mean, right now we just, uh, this last week, we've been going under 3% for the average mortgage loan right now. And that was just announced again, another all-time low. It seems like every week or two, we're hearing all-time low, all-time low, all-time low. So that interest rate yeah. has a significant impact, not only on the amount of money you're spending throughout the entire 30 years of the loan, but just your monthly payments. It makes a big difference in terms of going from a 3% to even like a 3.5% interest rate. So to take exactly. advantage of these low rates right now if you can do that you're going to be basically with the same priced home compared to even six months to 12 months ago you're spending a lot less on your mortgage right now um, and i mean yes they can go down possibly a little bit lower but when we're at all-time lows i mean the, yeah, it's getting, I think, be a higher um, and higher chance it's really going to start going back up a little bit um, especially if we start pulling out of this pandemic and we get a vaccine sometime early next year, which is obviously the hope. But as we start pulling out and things get more stable, those interest rates are going to start going back up again. And that's when you can start pricing yourself out of homes that now you can currently afford because when interest rates go up even slightly, it really starts impacting your monthly payment. And then again, your amount of money you're spending over the life of the loan too. Exactly. And then um, just to touch on that too, I mean, before the pandemic, no one could have predicted what happened this year, but the rates were actually predicted to go up to the high fives this year. Yeah. And so considering that, I mean, we are in a very, very, I mean, of course, with everything going on, it's a silver lining, but it's never been cheaper to get a mortgage. And so the payments do definitely shift upon that. But I guess kind of going back to the screen sharing too, I mean, it's always important to just look at things in perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were to continue renting for, let's say two grand a month, then in about a five year period, that's how much rent you would have paid. Whereas whether it's an FHA, whether it's conventional loan, you would have paid that much principal down in your mortgage. And that means that your net worth is increased by at least that much, right? Yes. Because you're at least putting your money into something that you're actually owning, not your landlord's pocket. And so yeah. another, I guess, point that I think a lot of new first time home buyers kind of miss when trying to determine when's the right time for them to buy is, Kind of the question they ask and so rather than figuring out the timing in which 
okay, I want to get in low and sell high, um, you know, because real estate's not, they're not stocks and they're not Bitcoin, you know, we're not trying to <laughs> time the market in that sense. And the reason why is because, I mean, if we kind of count in like this additional, I mean, like however much money you are currently renting for trying to time the market, either way, whether the home values do do go down a couple of percentage points, which right now the economists are actually not predicting that for the next few years. But even if it does, compare that worst case scenario of you buying with whatever the down payment you have, see what your estimated net worth would be with the home values depreciating slightly. And also with the best case of it appreciating, you know, a good amount or whatever the economists are currently saying, and mm -hmm. compare it to if you were to stay put. Almost always, yeah. even the worst case scenario, you're all you're still putting your family in a much higher net worth position by purchasing a home in this scenario. Got it. And for those people that are listening to this via podcast versus the video on here, what Mina's talking about is kind of the the rent versus owning in terms of the, the overall costs on there. So she was saying that for for a sixty month period, you're spending on rent. Um, that was based on two thousand dollars. You said a month. Yeah, I believe so. Let me double check that. Okay. Uh, twenty five hundred. I apologize. Twenty five. Okay, so yeah, twenty five hundred dollars a month. I mean, over over the sixty month period, you're spending over one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. So the other, in terms of cost wise as well, since we're kind of talking about this, so the overall cost um, difference between, let's say, someone is kind of on that border of should I go with FHA? Yes, I have a a little bit lower credit score, so maybe that's that's a, I need to go that way. But let's see if they're kind of going back and forth. Should I go FHA? Should I go with a three percent conventional? What is the overall kind of cost breakdown that someone's looking at if they have to if they're going between the two loans? Yeah. So. With the FHA loan, another kind of note is that overall, because the mortgage insurance is going to be required for the life of the loan, it mm -hmm. is going to be slightly higher in cost. And so just to show you the screen currently, like there's something called an upfront mortgage insurance premium, and that's 1.75% of the loan amount. And so that is going to actually get rolled into your mortgage and amortized over the 30 year period. So you don't have to come in with it out of pocket, but it is still a cost you're paying. And so with this upfront mortgage insurance premium already, it is going to be a slightly higher cost than the conventional loan. Okay. And then also, I guess it's important to take into consideration the fact that, you know, the mortgage insurance is required for 30 years for FHA, but it's only required for eight and a half years, even with a 3% down payment, because that's mm -hmm. the point at which your loan amount would be low enough where the mortgage insurance would drop off. Got and it. so I guess what I would tell somebody if they're maybe in like a, lower credit score kind of situation currently, maybe the FHA loan is going to come with a much, much lower payment due to the fact that they're a lot more forgiving toward the lower credit score. And so let's get you into this home that you love with a comfortable payment that you're comfortable with and kind of looking back at that chart, even with the FHA loan, it's still putting you in a better position than you are currently. Then okay. once you have your mortgage on your credit report, because another, I guess, aspect of how your credit score will improve is if you have a diverse credit, I guess, um, portfolio. Yep. And so if you've never had a mortgage before and now you have a mortgage and you're paying it back every single month, all timely, hopefully knock on wood, no mispayments <laughs> or anything like that, yep. then your credit score will actually most likely shoot up in the next six months. And so once your credit scores have improved enough, where the conventional loan will still offer all the benefits and also not have to overly inflated rates or mortgage insurance because your credit score is improved now, let's get you refinanced into the conventional loan. And so I think it's important to remember that with a mortgage, it's not going to be a one and done out the door kind of thing. Mm -hmm. To make sure you're saving as much money as you can overall, I think it is a long-term planning vehicle where I think you really have to work with someone who's going to be keeping an eye on that kind of thing for you. Got it. Yeah. And that's something, yeah, especially with lenders, you want to make sure that they're going to be, it's a, it's a lifetime relationship that you have that loan with them. So you want to make sure you stay in touch for specifically these type of things, because like you said, I mean, if they can go with the, because their credit score is lower, they can go with the FHA, but then refinance the conventional, that's going to save them a lot of money, especially once they get to that 20% equity in their house, because then they can drop off that mortgage insurance, whereas the FHA, you can't do that. And Exactly. Thing, so you're not stuck with one mortgage forever. That's just important to remember. And yeah, yeah, try to plan for the long term. Yep. And then one thing I do want to point out too with that is, I mean, especially over the next year, 
uh, you're going to, I mean, there's a lot of, obviously you've seen it all the time, refinancing going on right now because the interest yeah. rates. Um, I mean, there's people that are refinancing and refinancing and refinancing over and over again. I've even had people refinance twice in a year now because they keep dropping so significantly. Uh, but it is important to know that you are locking in an extremely low interest rate right now. Um, and if you are to refinance in six months from now, it's still probably going to be still very low compared to what it usually is around this time. Um, and that's something to keep in mind as well. So if you need to refinance from six months from now, you're not going to have 5% interest rates that kind of quick or might go help a little bit, but you're not going to be looking at a giant jump most likely. And something dramatic happens with the economy where all of a sudden a vaccine comes out next month and everybody's <laughs> Um, be about the only yeah, I feel time. like this year, if it taught us anything, we have no idea what the heck is yeah. going on. Right now. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I mean, it looks like the you're basically with FHA. I mean, it's a it's a great program to be in, but ideally, the conventional three percent, if you can get your credit score up to where it needs to be. Um, and what is in, in terms of credit score wise? I mean, do you know, what's the difference? What's kind of like the minimum you need for the the FHA to put that three point five percent down? Um, as well as like the conventional 3%. Is there a significant difference in credit score or is it something that's... Um, right now, so typically in a normal market and environment, yes. But right now due to the pandemic and just the overall instability of the markets, we have seen a little bit more guidelines strictening up for the FHA loans and we're seeing a lot of them get pulled back. But yeah, in a normal environment, at one point for FHA loans, you could even go from a 580 credit score and still qualify as long as all the other parameters were met. And mm -hmm. conventionals always, always typically required at least 640 or 620, depending on the bank too. But okay. for FHA, definitely, they're known to be a lot more flexible regarding that. And also different timelines of waiting periods between if you were, for example, foreclosed upon at one point, gone through a bankruptcy, the FHA waiting periods are much shorter compared to the conventional loan. Got it. Okay. That's great information to know. So before we get into the second topic we wanted to discuss today, I did want to bring up in terms of the agent side of things, what the biggest difference between conventional and FHA is, and that's the appraisal process. So once you get into escrow, you need to have the property appraised. And on the conventional side of things, the appraiser basically goes out there, he'll take pictures of the room, he'll measure the room, he'll look for some basic safety things like is the water heater strapped, do you have smoke detectors, that type of thing. And then they'll do the rest of the work when they go back to the office in terms of looking at comparable sales. Now, when you have an FHA loan, the requirements are a little more stringent. So what they have to do is they have to go in, look for those things, but they're also making sure, does the stove work? Does the heater work? Or is there any leaks in the property? If it was built before 1978, is there any chips in the paint? Because there could be lead in it. So there are a little bit more requirements like that that you have to have when you do an FHA loan that you don't have necessarily when you're doing conventional loans. So in this kind of environment or in a hot seller market and there's multiple offers on most homes, that is something to consider is that if there's not that giant of a difference of your payments between an FHA and conventional and you can go conventional, even if you have to pay a little bit more, your offer is going to be a lot more competitive when placed against any other offers that have an FHA loan because the seller ultimately is looking for a sure thing when they go into escrow with the buyer. So the more things that come up, the more problems that can arise is really going to turn off the, buy, the seller in general. So if you're able to kind of go with the conventional conventional loan instead of the FHA, you're going to give yourself a little bit of a better shot of getting into escrow than you would have if you have to go with FHA. So I just wanted to throw that out there um, before we get into the second part. The second thing I really wanted to go over today what comes down to the down payment amount because there's a lot of first-time home buyers out there and just home buyers in general that really want to save as much as they can um, to be able to put as much as they can down. So that way, obviously, it's going to lower your mortgage payment every month. But I just wanted to really go over um, the specifics on how much it actually does lower your payment because there's a lot of misunderstanding that hey if i can get from like a three and a half percent to five percent or a five percent to ten percent i'm going to be saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month on my mortgage um, which is not usually the case and i just kind of want to have you go over that in general in terms of breaking it down by dollar amount and then also with the down payment you want to make sure I, I see a lot of people do this where they put all the money they have into that down payment and they're not really saving anything set aside for emergency funds or especially for if, if you're a first time home buyer things like furniture things even the basic stuff like toilet furniture paper, is expensive. oh yeah very expensive 
cleaning supplies, all that kind of small stuff you don't really think about when you're buying your first home, but it starts adding up. When you move into that new place, you have to buy all that stuff usually. You might have some things from an apartment here or there, um, or you might be able to grab some stuff from your parents' house if you're moving out from something like that. Um, but there's a lot of small things that really add up. So you don't really want to start your home ownership journey by putting all your money into your down payment and then having to rack up your credit cards because you have no money left for all the basic necessities that you're going to need those first couple months when you move into your new place. So I just wanted to kind of go over for people out there the difference and what, what kind of a difference it actually makes from going from like a 3.5% to a 5% to a 10% in terms of your monthly mortgage payment. So obviously over the life of the loan, you're going to be saving more when you can put in a higher down payment. But I just want to, for those people, which usually is the most important thing for them is how much can I afford per month to make sure I'm comfortable um, in the place that I'm living. I'm not overextending myself. So I just wanted to have yeah. that kind of broken down for people uh, so they can see what a real difference between the different payments would be for down payments. Yeah, so I'll pull up a quick example here. And so I think I'll need to cancel this stream or once. Okay. And then go back into. So um, in the screen I'm sharing with you guys right now, I'm breaking down for all a purchase price of 650000 various down payments and also loan programs. So the first payment I'm breaking down is a 3.5% down FHA loan. And that's going to bring you a payment of around 3960 a month. And that's including your taxes, insurance, interest, principal, and your mortgage insurance. Um, secondly, the 5% down conventional loan, that's going to come with a 3642 a month uh, mortgage payment, including everything. 10% down, it'll go slightly lower to 3431 And then lastly, with the 15% down, it'll go to 3206 And that's the 3,206, not $32, just in case you guys were kind of hoping that the numbers were that low. But anyway, if we actually break down the difference, I guess, in terms of how much cash to close was needed, then right here, the down payment is presented for each of the scenarios. But essentially, for from a 3.5% FHA to a 5% down, you're able to keep about 12 grand in your pocket to account for the cost that Josh mentioned when it comes to moving furniture, even renovation costs potentially. And the payment differences are not as substantial as a lot of people may think. It's about $300 or so difference in payment to be able to keep in pocket about 12 to 13,000. With a 10% down compared to the 5%, of course, it's going to be double that down payment. So you're able to keep about 30,000 in your pocket, but the payment difference is actually only going down by just about $200 a month compared to the 5% down option. And so I guess when we think about whether or not it's worth, I guess, putting everything into the down payment when you know for a fact you're going to have some renovation costs for the kitchen, maybe, then might as well keep 30000 in your pocket, pay a little bit extra monthly, but at the very least, you don't have to put things on a 19% interest credit card because the mortgage has to fit with your overall plans. It's not a singular thing, right? And so just because you put everything into the down payment and I guess the payments seem lower, if you're putting everything on a credit card and the interest you're paying on that credit card balance is going to be 19%, yeah. it will be much, much more overall cost-wise lower if you were to just lower the down payment slightly since the mortgage debt is such one of the cheapest debt to get right now anyway, yeah. and just, just the loan amount slightly higher. Got it. Yeah, I mean, that's something, especially so between a lot of people, I think the, the most common one that I get is, okay, between even just like the 5% and 10%. And like you're saying, I mean, when you take the breakdown here, um, people are listening on here. So for the for the 5% down conventional, I mean, you're looking at a payment of a little over 20, uh, sorry, $2,200 on here. If you're going um, down- Over here, it'll be the total payment section. Yeah, sorry, the net monthly payment is showing a different number. Right here, okay, so sorry. Yeah, 3,000, so $3,600. Um, for the 5% down, where if you're looking at a 10% down, which requires you to come out of pocket, basically another $30,000, you're going to be only really saving about $200 a month, like you said. So that's not a significant amount. I mean, it could be a make or break for some people, but if you're able to save that $30,000 and be able to get into your house, get what you need, and not have to start your homeownership with a giant credit card debt, I mean, that's that's probably going to be a better scenario for you to be in, especially with interest rates so low right now. Um, 
But again, it all depends on the situation. So if you have some extra money hidden away or someone else is giving you extra money um, after you close escrow, because there's obviously gift funds that people can use for um, getting some of that down payment amount. But if you're getting some money from some other way that doesn't have to do with credit card debt and you're not running these 19, 24% interest rates on there, then that could be option. Um, but for two, to, to save $200 a month, to really stretch yourself if that's all you have to pay is usually not going to be worth it for most people. Yeah, and then I also wanted to kind of note too, like the question I would get often, and I think a lot of home buyers or prospective home buyers are thinking, okay, I have about, let's say around 40 grand in the bank and they're, they technically have enough for a 5% down payment. Mm -hmm. But then they're thinking, actually, I wanna wait until I have 10% down in order to buy a home, because then my monthly payment's gonna be lower and my terms are gonna be better. And so I've kind of gotten that kind of scenario question pretty often, but yeah, like Josh mentioned, the rates are so low right now. And realistically jumping from a 5% down payment to a 10%, I mean, to save 30,000 estimate, even if you put away a thousand a month, every single month on top of your rent, it will take a few years in order to save the additional 5% that you're aiming for to the 10%, right? And yeah. so if we take into account the homes appreciating too, then the home values might be slightly higher at the time you're trying to buy. And the rates are again at rock bottom record lows that nobody expected right now. And so it's interesting if we compare and contrast actually a 5% down payment in the current interest rate environment market, let's say the payment ends up being about 2034 for principal and interest. And even considering a slightly higher mortgage insurance payment with a 10% down, so the mortgage insurance, principal and interest, let's say the rate goes up to like four and a quarter and in a three year period, that's completely likely, right? And mm -hmm. the four and a quarter actually is historically still actually a very favorable rate, but um, your payment, although you're putting this extra 30,000 or so down is going to be actually higher than if you were to buy now with a 5% down payment. And so, yeah, I guess in the situation where you're debating between higher down payment, lower down payment in terms of what you wanna do after closing, that's super important. But if it's kind of determining whether or not you're going to buy a home at all, I would say really crunch down and look at the numbers because you'd be surprised. I mean, the interest rate does make a big difference. And right now we are kind of spoiled with how low the rates have gotten. Yeah. And I mean, that's an overall wise. I mean, if you're looking at next year, I mean, the chances of interest rates going up are pretty high right now because the market is so hot for in a seller's market right now because inventory is so low and demand is so high because of those interest rates. We're also seeing appreciation. So the trends are not in buyer's favor right now for waiting. Um, and, but I always tell buyers, I mean, and I think you pretty much said the same thing. We talked about this earlier before um, we started everything, but I mean, you want to make sure you're buying what you can afford now. You're not, you're not a real estate investor looking at speculation, trying to figure out where the top of the market it is and the bottom of the market it is. You want to make sure that you're buying a home that you can afford right now and that you're comfortable with payments. If those line up for you, I mean, that's a good indication that yes, you should start looking for a home and not trying to hope and dream that, hey, prices might come down, interest rates might come down in the future and maybe I'll be able to shave another $100 off my mortgage payment. Because again, based on the data where everything's going right now, it's not trending in the right direction for buyers six months from now. So that's something to always consider is you wanna buy what you can afford right now and not really try to speculate because it just does not worth it in the long run. Yeah, and just know that even if you buy with the worst case scenario, run those numbers and know that you're actually still putting and making a decision for your family that puts you in a better position later on down the line. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Well, I think that's the majority of the information I want to go over today. So I hope that gave some people a little bit of clarity, not only on the difference between FHA as well as conventional and letting people know there is options out there for conventional loans, even down to 3%, but kind of what the difference is on trying to save that extra couple thousand dollars or $10,000, $30,000, what that actually does to your monthly mortgage payment. So you can take that information, use it to your advantage and figure out if now's the right time to buy for you or if continuing to save a little bit. Um, and purchase in the future is something that's going to be better for you. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again, Mina, for joining us. No, thank you, Josh. Okay, bye, everyone. If you found this podcast useful, please hit subscribe and leave a review below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any family or friends that want some more information about buying or selling a home or just want to stay updated on the Orange County housing market, please share with them. It'd mean the world to me. Thanks.